In the 1970s, when big men dominated, Elvin Hayes stood out above the crowd. A rugged defender and two-time rebounding champ, also known for his turnaround jumper, the Big E won a title with Washington and remains the franchise all-time leading scorer. I'm Elvin Hayes of the Washington Bullets. He's stopped by Elvin Hayes. <laughs> that was a tremendous defensive play by Elvin Hayes. Elvin with his famous turnaround Three shot. That's the good rhythm. Elvin could score. You know, Elvin was uh, unique in that respect from just about any place on the floor. I mean, he'd move, you know, he could jump, he could shoot, he could run. He loved getting out on the break and going to the basket. Because they're pulling apart and he's rolling one on one. Hey, steal! First, a salute to Elvin Hayes, who led the league in scoring in his rookie year. Plenty of stories with the Big E. We actually came in around the same time, 67, 68. I think he might have been 68, 69. Phenomenal shooter, 68, 69. Could post you, he could come on the perimeter. Phenomenal rebounder, averaging 10 to 12 rebounds a game, 25 points, and could run the floor like a gazelle, man. He was so fast. Ferocious. He's a ferocious guy. He he run over you, push you around, elbow you. So a very physical guy. And that's the guy Willis Reed had to guard. So uh, Willis had a lot of problems with Elvis because he was very loose. Quarter to Hayes again. He's taking up from everywhere. Here's Elvin Hayes. Boy, you lean in like that and over. Silas fronting Hayes. Now with the left hand. Williams seals him up on the double team. But still the Big E's got the ball. Hayes swats at him. Walker goes over, and Elvin Hayes hits it. Three different men all over the Big E. Elvin was a scoring machine. Uh, he could really, number, at six foot nine, uh, he could run the floor as well as most guards. He would be the recipient uh, of a lot of fast break points. But he also could play with his back to the basket. He could shoot the ball. He shot at uh, a lot of the bank shots. He was a hell of an offensive player. And he jumped really good. So he played defense around uh, the hoop pretty well also. He was a well-rounded player. And a milestone for Elvin Hayes, who broke John Havlicek's record. Played more games than anyone in the history of the league. Most minutes played, over 49,900. Most games played, 1,303. Third all-time points, over 27,300. Third all-time rebounds, over 16,250. Elvin Hayes, we're going to miss you. They call him the Big E. That's Elvin Hayes, and he has done it all. Rebounded, shot well, and played great basketball for the defending world champions. Congratulations. Thank you very much. For me, he was another underrated. I mean, you know, when you really think about him, you think about his college days with Houston, you think about him playing against Kareem. I think he really established, you know, his dominance, you know, as a basketball player, um, you know, when he was at Houston. So he had an unbelievable career, and he's definitely uh, one of the best to ever play. I would like to remember that in basketball, Elvin Hayes not only took away from the game of basketball, but he gave something. He left something with the game. I think there's very few chances in your life that you can participate in something and said, hey, you made a difference. You were a difference. You made the game a little better. Elvin Hayes was part of the so-called game of the century as a college star when his University of Houston team squared off with then Lou Alcindor and UCLA in Houston at the old Astrodome and then, of course, thrived in the NBA as well. What was it about him that lands him on this list? Well, when he came in as a rookie, he led the NBA in scoring. The next year, led the NBA in rebounding. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. He's one of the best power forwards of the 70s, a guy who could get his, his shot on the floor, also a good rebounder as well. Uh, he had a lethal turnaround jump shot on the baseline and also the top of the key, but initially didn't win a lot of games with the San Diego, then Houston Rockets. But when he was traded to Washington, that was a game changer. Yeah, he's traded to Washington and paired up with Wes Unseld, and, and folks weren't sure if that would work. Why did it? Well, initially, you had two big men, and you wondered if they would clash, the chemistry. Uh, but Wes Unseld was a low-post guy, relentless rebounder, defender, protected the rim. And meanwhile, Elvin 
is on the perimeter. So they worked together like peanut butter and jelly, basically. Uh, they went to the NBA Finals three times, won it once, and suddenly nobody was talking about chemistry. Hmm. The last rookie to lead the NBA in scoring way back when, the great Elvin Hayes. Six foot nine from Houston, number 44, the Biggie Elvin Hayes. Oh, Biggie. <laughs> yeah, Elvin gave me a lot of pride and confidence in my turnaround jump shot because I thought uh, no one shot the turnaround jump shot quite like the Big E. His turnaround jump shot was like Kareem's folk shot. You knew exactly what they was going to do, but wasn't much you could do about it. You just had to accept it. When I began to play basketball, I put a goal up in my backyard, and uh, there I really worked on that shot because I didn't want anybody to block my shot. And so I really worked on it every day. I would shoot two or 300 shots in a bucket on nail onto a pole. And I would shoot into this bucket all day for about two or 300 times. Then in the evening, later on, I would shoot again. So I perfected that shot to get it down to where no matter how big you were or how strong you were, you wasn't going to be able to block that shot. For the first time in 36 years, Washington, D.C. has a major sports world champion. You had, you had a ring. Hey, I got the ring. This That's is right. what it's all about. That's exactly I right. Tell you, it's, it's just a tremendous feeling. 